What's up you guys? So in today's video I'm going to be talking about a modern living legend. I'm talking about Andy Timmons. Not only is he incredibly adept on the instrument, but he's just incredibly expressive on the instrument. He's one of these guys that is just, he goes music first and then technique second. So it's more important to be expressive and to say something with your instrument than just play a ton of random notes just as fast as possible. And that's why Andy Timmons is so special. He's also known for his amazing, amazing tone. With that comes a whole lot, different line of different pedals, which, of which I have two of them. And they are both amazing, just incredibly sounding. Now, if you haven't heard of him, you should check him out because he's just, you're totally missing out on some amazing, amazing guitar playing. But since I know most of you guys have, let's just go on to the lesson really quick. Now, in terms of scales, he enjoys his pentatonic scale. He plays a lot of pentatonic scale, and a lot of his vocabulary is very blues and hard rock or classic rock based. We tend to see a lot of winding type pentatonic licks and some uh, blues based vocabulary or blues based type melodies. And I, I have to say this just as much as possible. He's very, very, very melodic when he's playing. Another scale he likes to use a lot is the major scale. And this is something you can, you can tell with a lot of his songs. Like if you listen to some of the melodies, um, and, and the harmony, the harmony is kind of simple. You get some classic rock type of, of harmonies, types of chords, which makes everything sound very, very big and very, very much like an anthem. So he's definitely not shy about using the major scale. He also employs a lot of shred type of things. He's not the common shredder that you would probably see around. He's more melodic, more expressive. But when he's doing a lot of the shred stuff he likes to do, it's based on the major scale. Some other scales you get to find in his playing is the harmonic minor scale, especially using some Phrygian dominant over some dominant chords at times. And there's some hints of, of the use of melodic minor in some of his more jam style, maybe jazz based type of things. Because he's been getting a lot more into jazz as of late and he's adding more more things like the altered scale. He's also using the chromatic scale and just adding chromaticism right in between different arpeggios and different, different scales. Now another really cool thing he likes to do is this very cool dominant 11th arpeggio which Eric Johnson also likes to do. I actually use this in the, the beginning video, in the beginning solo. Now it's this guy right here. I'm gonna be doing it from, from C just so it's a little bit easier to grasp. So you have the root, the third, the fourth, the fifth, flat seven, I root again. Now it's something that he and, and Eric Johnson like to do a lot. No. Now going on to the concepts and techniques, the first thing I'm going to talk about is his use of a very different quirky type of dynamic type of phrasing. So with this comes a lot of slides, a lot of different types of bends, um, different pinch harmonics, for example. Um, so with the slides, one thing he likes to do is something I tried to, to use at the beginning solo is using slides to go into a note and to go out of a note. So for example, I'm going to be going on the B minor pentatonic scale. So what he would do is, he would go slide into the first one, and then on the next note, he would slide right out of it. And then same thing to the next notes of the pentatonic scale. So 
that's something really, really nice to maybe start um, a faster section or, or a fast type of line. Another cool thing he likes to do with slides is take them into a bend or just use them as a melodic device. So as a melodic device, you could use it like something like this. And that way you can travel to different, um, different higher or, or larger intervals just by sliding from one note to the other. The other cool thing he likes to do is using slides to go into bends. So he could go. Something like that. Now, since we're already talking about bends, he likes to use whole tone bends, half tone bends, and whole and a half tone bends. So a band that, that's a whole tone and a half above the note you're actually starting the bend from. So we have a half tone bend. We have a whole tone bend. And we have a whole and a half bend. So when you do these types of bends, you want to make sure that you know the note you want to land on. So for example, in this case, I'm going to be starting on here, and I want to finish on this note, which is part of the minor pentatonic scale, the B minor pentatonic scale. So there you have three different types of bends. So another really cool type of bend he likes to do is he likes to slide into note, bend that note, and then play the same note on the other string and releases the first, the, the bended note, as soon as he lands on that note. So, so it goes a little something like this. That right there is another really cool thing he likes to do. Now there's another really cool thing that, that he likes to employ with the pentatonic scale and the major scale. Uh, and it's something he does with alternate picking. This is a really cool example that he likes to mention in most of the lessons he has on, on YouTube, actually. Um, and this is something he does when he mentions alternate picking. The, the really cool thing about doing these types of videos is you get to learn a lot of, that a lot of really cool, really good guitarists use a lot of similar techniques. But it's amazing how they make them sound just completely different. Now, this technique I actually mentioned on my Sack Wild video. It's something Sack Wild does. And when you listen to Sack Wild, you're totally, definitely not thinking, wow, he sounds a lot like Andy Timmons. And it's just crazy that they're both using the same pentatonic scale and the same alternate picking technique with the same horizontal pentatonic approach, but they both sound just completely different. So the whole thing is, goes something like this. It goes. <laughs> That's pretty much the whole example. It's something a lot of a lot of players like to do. It's really cool, and it gets and it opens up different areas of the neck, so you get to move around. You don't just stay on the same positions. So that's a really cool thing to have under your fingers if you want to be able to move throughout the fretboard. I like to apply it with the pentatonic scale. Same thing with the major scale. You can do the same thing with, with the major scale or natural minor scale in this case, which again, I'm doing everything over a beat. So it would be. And just keep going down. This time it's the same type of technique employed over a different scale. So again, you can open that up to all the different scales you already know. Now, another cool thing he likes to do is the use of double stops. Now, he might use some, like I did at the beginning of the video, to use different types of intervals. Or he might use it in, in a more Hendrix or rock type of feel. So. So that's more of a rock type of feel, but again, you could use it more like Hendrix did. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with double stops. The other thing he likes to use is open strings. So just try to fit different open strings wherever you can. Again, at the beginning of the video, what I did is, and I took this a little bit from Electric Gypsy, and is I took an open string. 
and I played a melody over it. So. And then I moved to the to the next string, and I used the A string as an open string as a bass. So. So see, already I got a little bit inspired just by doing that. It's a really cool tool that you can add to your arsenal. Now another thing he likes to do is the use of pitch harmonics. Now, it's interesting because again I'm mentioning Zach Wilde here. This is something you think about when you, you, you tend to think about Zach Wilde when you mention pinch harmonics. But when you listen to Andy Timmons, they do not sound like at all. Like, like Zach Wilde, wow, they sound a little bit more subtle, not so aggressive. So keep that in mind when trying to apply these, these pinch harmonics. The other thing is he actually uses them in a manner that's kind of unpredictable. So he might be doing a fast run and at the end or right in between the, the actual run he might add some pinch harmonics in there. Which is, and that's something that's very common with his playing. He's not too predictable. So he might be playing something fast and just go into a bend or go into some slides. It's very quirky like that. In other words, you can say that he just goes with the flow. He's constantly listening to what he's playing and he's making just tons and tons of decisions right on the go. So he's deciding, okay, so this note I want to play here or here or here. Um, he's just, he's always thinking more about the music, more about the melody than anything else. That's why he. I like to say that he goes with the flow. And that's something we can all apply to our own playing, just go with the flow and play exactly what we mean to play and not over plan or overthink um, certain aspects or certain legs or certain runs that you would like to play. Just let it all go, just let it, just play what you feel. All right, so with that, I finished this lesson. Hope you guys liked it, hope you guys learned something new. Remember to follow me on all type of social media. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram, I'm obviously on YouTube. You can check out my book called The Art of Scale Weaving. I have it out on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And if you're interested in lessons, just go to my website, juanantonio.com, drop me an email, and we'll get in touch. All right, thanks for watching.